that might connect us with your heart's desire, your cry for something different, something more meaningful, something more significant in your world and in your life. We just sung, you just sung, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's something about that and there's something about the peace that God gives that connects his bigness to his big promise of peace. But also, unless we think about it more clearly and more deeply, it can be really confusing for us. You know, in Luke chapter 2 and sentence number 13, it says this, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, so there was an angel and then the, the sky was filled with all these angels and they cried out in one voice these words, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. It's the promise of glory in the heavens and the promise of peace on earth. And then my God is so big, so strong and so mighty. And how big is God? He is so big that there is nothing that he cannot do. You see, we all search for peace. People of all ages are searching for peace. People of all ages are desiring peace and and hoping for peace. And today we've been helpfully reminded of how God in his love for you and for me has provided not only the promise of peace but also the provision of peace. You know, in the Bible, the word for peace is the word shalom. It means more than just a hope of a covering of peace in a particular moment in our lives. Shalom means more than just the presence of peace in whatever we might be going through that might be difficult for us. Shalom is a deep desire for peace that lies within every single one of us. The word shalom is personal peace, but it's also community peace. It's like family peace. Most of all, shalom is something that we don't have And we only get it if God gives it to us. Shalom is a gift, a divine peace, a heavenly peace, or if you like, a perfect peace. See, we like to think about peace as something which is not, or something that's absent, or something that's different from what we presently have. So peace is the absence of bad stuff. Or, or peace is, is just people agreeing to disagree in order to stop arguing. Or peace is just people compromising in order to bring about an end of conflict. Or leaders signing peace treaties in order to stop the fighting. But shalom is a guarantee from God of eternal peace. Holy peace, good peace, fulfilling peace. Shalom is the assurance of peace. Not just the peaceful five minutes that we hope we might get until the little kids wake up to disturb it. Or or, or not just the five minutes more of peace in the mornings before we head out into the chaos of whatever the day might bring. Or not just even, for some of us, the five minutes more at work before we head home to engage once again in that usual discussion. Shalom peace is a hope. It's a search. It's a promise that peace will one day be a reality. That nothing will ever invade it that nothing will ever threaten it and nothing will ever disturb it. And that's the peace that we believe everyone is looking for. And that's the peace that we believe most people haven't been able to find or even if they have, it's not completely fulfilled yet. 
That's the peace that God promises and that's the peace that only God can provide. The sort of peace that says, you know what, even though life is hard, and it is, and even though making ends meet is a frustration, and it can be, that I can still have hope. The, the, the peace that says even though that I might be experiencing some frustration or some danger or some hassle or even some conflict, oh, I can still have shalom. Even though I might be living in a war zone, I can still have assurance. And we ask why and how. And the answer to the why and the answer to the how is a who. My God is so big. My God is so strong. My God is so mighty. How mighty? He's all mighty. And there's nothing that God cannot do. And you know what? That's the amazing thing about God's peace and that's the amazing thing about Christmas. Think about it. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. There's the promise of peace from God, but we all know that there's a problem with that. And that's because the next thing we read in the Bible, if you want to read the Bible, the, really, the next thing that happens is that there's a really bad king, and he's called Herod, and he brings about untold terror. He brings about a sadness and a fear and a heartbreak that we can't imagine. We have this promise of peace and the very next thing that happens is that. And we say, where is that peace? Where is that hope? Where is that shalom? And you know what? The answer to the question is who? And it's right in front of them. And if you would look today, it's right in front of you. It's a God who is so big that he comes to us as a baby. It's a God who is so strong that he's wrapped in a nappy. It's a God who is so mighty that they have to put him in a manger. See, it changes the way we think about peace. We, the God who is that strong, mighty and powerful that there's nothing that he cannot do even coming in flesh. And because of that, because of him, we can have peace because he is our peace. He doesn't come and say, hey, if you obey me enough, then I'll give you peace and I'll give you love and I'll give you acceptance. No, he comes and he says, I love you and I accept you and peace I give you now, obey me. And that's why peace that is looked for or hoped for in anything other than Jesus Christ is going to disappoint. Because that Jesus in that manger is that Jesus on that cross and is that Jesus from that empty tomb and the peace maker that is promised to us is himself the shalom provider. The peace promised is the peace provided through the peace of Jesus. So listen with fresh ears to how the story of peace is transformed by Jesus. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. Glory in heaven, peace on earth. And listen to how the story works out. In Revelation chapter 21, And I saw a new heaven, and a new earth. And I heard a loud voice on the throne say, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, 
and God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things have passed away. And Shalom has come. And Shalom is coming. I want to pray for us and then we're going to sing. God, we thank you for your peace. We thank you for that Shalom promise. And we thank you for the peace maker, the peace keeper, who is Jesus. Lord, we live in a world and even in our own hearts and minds, we go through every day and some of us might even endure every day hoping for peace, looking for peace, trying to construct some sort of peaceful outcome. And yet, Lord God, we know that there's always tomorrow and the next day and the next day and there's always the next thing that appears on the news and there's always the next frustration that is before us and we once again are trying to cry out and look for peace but Lord God we pray that today you might help us to look beyond peace and look for shalom and then find it in the person of Jesus and that this Christmas might be a time when we find peace in a person find peace in the one who has come to bring eternal peace into the hearts and minds and lives and forevers of his people. Those who put their trust in you. Those who put their faith in you. So Lord God, we pray that you would help us to be mindful of that promise of peace, but also, Lord God, that we might think differently about what we're actually looking for And know that we can find it in the one who came to find us, the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for coming and we thank you for the peace that we have in you. And we pray it all in Jesus' name.